Over the course of last year, with all the AI hype that's been going on, I have tried several different AI assistants integrated to VS Code through extensions like Microsoft's Copilot, Einstein for Salesforce, Kodi, Tabby, just to name some of them. Now, about 10 days ago, I started using Cursor and have been working with it ever since. Guess I'm a bit late to the party seeing how well anticipated this tool is in the developer community. Now, Cursor is not a build from ground up kind of IDE. It's essentially a fork of VS Code with AI features. So simply put, it's an AI wrapper on VS Code. So if you're already familiar working with VS Code, it will be a very similar experience. So in this video, I want to share my experience working with Cursor over the past few weeks and jump over to one of my projects and go over some of the features so you can decide finally whether it's time to switch over from VS Code. Cursor is integrating AI exceptionally well into the IDE. It's there when you need it, but it doesn't get in your way. The user experience is exceptionally good, in my opinion. So I want to jump into one of my projects here and give you a walkthrough of what it looks like and go over some of the features. I have one of my projects opened up here in Cursor and I want to give you a quick walkthrough of how the UI looks before we get into the features. So this is one of my projects opened up. As you can see on the left hand side here, we have a panel which is very much similar to VS Code. So you have a directory tab, you have a tab to search through your code base, you have your Git tab, you have your extensions tab. And also you have a drop down here uh, where you can swap between all these tabs. So basically this is essentially what we have in VS Code. And if you look at the file UI, it is very similar to what we have in VS Code, how we have the split views, we have the terminal down here. So basically it's a clone of VS Code, except with one feature which you may have noticed is the chat feature. So now let's go over some of the features Cursor offers. The number one being multiple models. So as opposed to chatting with just ChatGPT or Cloud 3.5, Cursor gives you these options by default. So if you look at the right hand panel here, below the chat feature, you have a small drop down where you can pick from all these different models. So you have six different models by default. I'll get to what does this mean in terms of pricing in a bit. So you can pick from GPT-40, Cursor Small, Cloud 3.5, Sonnet, uh, GPT-40 Mini, O1 Mini, and a preview. So Cursor Small is Cursor's own model, which isn't as fast or as smart as uh, GPT-40, but uh, the good thing here is it's free to use you have unlimited access to Cursor Small. So uh, if you don't know, uh, Cursor has both paid and a uh, free plan. I'm on Cursor's free plan. So if you're on free plan, you get 50 requests per month in any of these models. After that, you have to pay in order to send new requests. But on Cursor Small, you have unlimited access. That means you can send as many requests as you want with no charge. And if you're also a paid customer for uh, ChatGPT, you can just put in your API key here and just use uh, ChatGPT 4.0 over here in, as opposed to just chatting over there. So you don't have to pay for Cursor, you only pay one subscription, which is a good thing. So now let's go over some of the features that you would expect an AI assistant would have. So the, one of them being um, auto completion. So as with any AI assistance, you would expect this feature to be there. So let's say if I come over here and let's say console.c, I just press C and it already gave me the auto completion. So you have the auto complete feature, which is pretty basic with everything. Uh, and the second feature you have here is prompt and edit. So you could basically ask it to edit something in your file. So let's see what I can do here. So I have a couple of links. So I'm gonna copy all of these and say, so uh, one of the things to note here with cursor is that you have a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, for example, see when I chose this area, you have the option to press shift command L to add this part into the chat and talk about that specific bit or just let's just do that and say, you can ask them to prompt and edit. So let's say change these links into 
anger tag. So you can prompt and edit and it would ba basically give you the whole thing. And you have the option here to copy it and paste it or you could simply press apply. So if you press apply, you almost get like a diff version, like when you have a diff version in Git to accept or decline the incoming changes. So if you press command Y here, you could accept all the changes. Uh, so you can see all the links uh, became anger tag, uh, which is not the right change because uh, in next years you need it to be linked. But just to show you here. So that's one bit you can prompt and edit, which essentially uh, changes whatever edit you ask it to do. And the next one is you can ask a question, which is similar to asking a question in any model like ChatGPT or uh, cloud. Uh, it doesn't have to be specific about your code base or a file. So if you look here, you right now I'm talking to the current file, which is footer. So you can see here on the top, it says I'm talking to the current file. So instead of talking to the current file, you could just simply talk to it about uh, normal stuff like you would do to any any model. So let's ask a basic question. Is it better to use uh, Next over React? See, so it would give you generic answers, not just something that's related to your code base or your file. Um, so that is also available here. So instead of jumping back and forth between your VS Code and your ChatGPT or Sonnet window, you could just do everything in one place, which is super cool. And we also increases your productivity at least by threefold, in my opinion. Now, staying on the topic of asking questions and giving prompts, we already saw that we can ask any generic questions to the model. It doesn't have to be about your code base or, or the file you're working on. And you can also prompt and edit to the file that you're working on to ask it to change something and it would do that. And the third prompt here is you can chat to the code base. What makes it really stand out from other AI helpers is the ability to build indices of your code base and give them as meaningful context to the AI. While other tools can also do this, what this really means is the process of indexing and referencing the index is very efficient in cursor. By asking questions about your code base, it actually learns about your code base. So this is great for onboarding new code base. Uh, cursor indexes the code and you can ask questions and in most cases it gives you an accurate answer. So you will very quickly find your way around your relevant files and uh, code uh, of your task at hand. So le let's see what this means in real action. I'll start a new chat here. And I would say instead of, uh, so here the current file, we are talking to the current file. So instead of doing that, I can say, find me all the files where I have a image component imported from next. And instead of talking to the current file, I do have the option to talk to the code base. So if you press command enter, it will talk to the current code base and see uh, it goes to the entire directory of your folder and it fi finds all the files that has an import of next image, which I asked for. So instead of just talking to the current file, you can also talk to the entire code base, which is really useful. So let's say you're working on a specific file or you have a variable reference somewhere and you say, I want to change this reference of the variable in the entire code base. You could simply prompt that and it would file. It would find in most cases, all of the files that has referenced uh, that specific variable and you can prompt a change to that specific variable if you want, uh, which in my opinion gives you a productivity of at least threefold. The next killer feature that I like the most and that I have not seen any other tools offer is called at docs mention feature so what it really does is if you come down to the chat feature here at the at the bottom you can see there's an option called at mention so basically what you can add at a file folder code even the web uh, documentation git or your code base so what i use this feature the most is for documentation so if you go here to docs you have you can see by default you have a couple of documentations available here uh, for Amazon's EC2, S3, and one of them I added is the Next.js doc. 
So basically, you can talk to a documentation from online without even having to switch between uh, uh, tabs or windows. So let's say I'm talking to the Next.js documentation now and after we do that, I will show you how you can add your own documentation. So uh, find me all the documentation about the Next.js link, let's say link component. So right now it's talking to the next day's documentation, not to my code base, not to my file that I'm working on. So it basically went through the documentation pages here, as you can see, and it gave you all the information about the link component that I asked for from the documentation, which is super cool. And I have not seen any extensions or AI assistants do this. So in order for you to add your own documentation or your helper file or whatever you wanna add, is you basically go here. So if you wanna add your documentation, let's say you say add a new doc, so you can give it, so let's say react, react.dev. So let's add react.dev and I will call it react doc. So I have react.dev added here as an assistant. So once you confirm, now you have react doc here. So you can say react. So every time you wanna talk to that specific documentation you added, so you go, I can say react doc. So it comes up here, you say react doc, uh, find me all the, find all the info about functional components. So let's see what it brings. So it's basically going through the react.dev uh, documentation and pulling up all the information from the documentation, which is really helpful. This is really helpful. What this does is it drastically reduces hallucination and produces very good code suggestions. And it's very beautiful to watch uh, AI write code that you can actually use uh, without hallucinating too much. And that's about all the features you need to know to use a cursor. It's really not a complicated tool like we mentioned earlier. It's basically a clone of uh, VS Code with powerful AI features in them. And there is this saying that the only difference between a junior and a senior developer are the tools they use. And using cursor really makes you feel like you're a 10x developer and it makes you that much more productive. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this playlist where I'm building web apps and startups in public and sharing the things I learned along the way. Subscribe if you haven't already and if you have been, thanks for watching.